Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial, I will show you how to make the connection managers dynamic in SSIS. So in this video, I will show you how to create the dynamic connection managers for flat file, Excel file and for OLEDB connection for SQL server as well. So let's jump to the demo. In my D files location, I got two files sellers.csv and employee.xlsx and I have created a very basic SSIS package that in the first data flow task, I'm just importing the flat file, this sellers.csv flat file to the SQL server table, sellers table, which is empty as of now. And in the second data flow task, which is the import an Excel file, I'm trying to import an Excel file, this employee.xls file into the SQL server table, email underscore sample, which is also empty as of now. So these two files will be loaded when the SSIS package will run and they will be imported to a SQL Server database. So at the moment, all three connection managers are static. They are not dynamic. Whenever you make a connection manager, so as soon as you make a connection manager dynamic, then you will see an FX sign on the top left side of the this particular icon. So first of all, let me try to execute this SSIS package so that the data should be imported from the CSV file and the Excel file to the SQL Server table. So I can click on the Start button. Now the package is running. Now you can see that the package got completed and in the first data flow task, it has imported 1000 records to the SQL server table. So I can check the data here. So you can see that 1000 records have been added to the SQL server table. So it seems like the ID is not mapped correctly or maybe the ID is not an identity column. So that's why it's value did not get generated automatically. Yeah, we don't have the ID in the source table. So that's why the ID is null and rest of the data got populated here. So we got 1000 records. Okay. So now let me check how many records got loaded for the Excel file. Yeah. So 1000 records also got loaded for the Excel file into the email underscore sample table here. So I can check the data now in the email underscore sample table. And yeah, 1000 records have been loaded to this table as well. So data has been loaded to both the tables. Okay. So now what I want is that I want to make the flat file connection manager and the Excel connection manager is dynamic so that I can just pass the name of any CSV file and I can pass the name of any Excel file and that file should be loaded to the respective SQL server table. But of course the layout of both the files should be same. I mean the layout of the CSV file should be same whatever file we are loading right now and the layout of the Excel file should be same according to the whatever file we are loading right now. So the first thing that we can do is that we can make the variables here. So for the CSV file I can make a CSV file path SSIS variable here and the data type will be a string. So under value, I need to provide the path of the new CSV file that I want to import. Okay. So I want to import a file from the production data folder. So if I open this particular folder, so there is a file here sellers.csv and maybe I can call it something else. Maybe I can append the date as well 2022 Okay. And this particular CSV file also contains some data but the records are not the 1000 records. So in this file, we got the 540 records and the first record is the header information. So that's why 539 records should be loaded from this particular CSV file. So I can copy the file path from here, copy this one and I can paste the path inside the value property. Okay. So this is fine. Now what I can do, I can right click on the flat file connection manager go to the properties and then I need to click on the expressions and from the property, I need to select the connection string property. So this is the property that we need to assign from the SSIS variable. So we can just drag and drop the CSV file path here. Click OK. OK. So now the flat file connection manager is dynamic and it should import a new file. OK. And now let me make the Excel connection manager dynamic as well. Let me create a variable here and I will call the variable as Excel file path and the data type will be a string of course and I need to provide the new excel file path value. So I got an excel file here employee underscore current data timestamp dot xlsx and if I open this particular file so this file does not contain 1000 records but this file contains 320 records okay. So I can close this particular file and I can copy the path of this particular file and provide the value here inside the value property. So now the, this Excel file will be imported. And yeah, as I told you that 
because the flat file connection manager is dynamic now so you can see an fx sign before the this icon similarly you will see an fx sign here before the excel connection manager icon as soon as this connection manager will be dynamic so i can right click on it and go to the properties and if you click on the expressions and click on these three dots so there is a property excel file path so you need to assign the value of the excel file path from the excel file path ssis variable okay, you can click on ok ok so now you can see an fx sign before the excel connection manager as well so this means that this connection is dynamic as well okay so now what i can do is that i can truncate both the tables okay and if i check the data now so that both the tables are empty and i can rerun the ssis package so this time the new file should be loaded and less data should be imported so if you see the csv file it loaded 539 records so i can check the data now 539 records so that's good and now i can check the excel file as well so it has imported 320 records so i can check the data for the email sample table as well yeah so it has imported 320 records so this was about making the flat file connection manager and the excel connection manager is dynamic now if you want to make the sql server connection manager is dynamic the oledb connection manager is dynamic then what you need to do you need to define two variables here the first one will be the server name and the data type will be of course a string here and for example i want to import this data onto the sql server 2017 instance so i can provide the server name here and i can connect to the sql server 2017 instance so if you expand the databases so there is a database ssis here okay so i want to import the data to the 2017 server and into the ssis database so what i can do i have copied the sql server 2017 instance name from here and i can provide the value here now i can create another variable and i can call it as database name and the data type will be a string and the database name is ssis okay so i have saved these two ssis variables here and if you go back to the ssms so this is the sql server 2017 instance and the ssis database so i have already created two tables here and the tables are empty as of now okay so what i will do i will make the oledb connection manager as dynamic and i will provide the server name from this variable and the database name from this variable so whatever value you will provide to these variables that value will be assigned to the appropriate connection manager okay so i can close this one and now i can right click on the oledb connection manager go to the properties if you click on the expressions and check the properties here so there is a server name property so i can select the server name property and i need to assign it from the server name ssis variable i can click on ok now there is a property initial catalog initial catalog means database name so i need to assign the property initial catalog from the database name and i can click on ok ok so now my sql server connection manager is dynamic as well you can see an fx sign before it so this is good now this will import the data to the sql server 2017 instance into the ssis database so i can see that the table is empty and i can execute the ssis package so although the name of the connection manager seems like it, it is loading the data to the sql server 2019 instance but because the connection manager is dynamic and the variable values were pointing to the sql server 2017 so that's why it should have inserted the data to the sql server 2017 instance so i can check the data now yeah so the data has been imported to the sql server 2017 instance and both the tables got populated so this is good yeah, so this is how you can make the connection managers dynamic using the ssis variables so i think that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time i upload a new video thank you so much